trying to make a nice, uniform, beautifully looking product at the end of your baking day, pan and proof basket sizes are very, very important. One of the things I notice with a lot of the videos out there is they don't talk enough about scaling weights. Now, scaling weights are critically important. As an example, you can have too little dough inside a pan and you wonder why your loaf of bread isn't turning out the way it should. You want to get it a little bit bigger so you let it proof a little bit longer and then it just falls and collapses and turns into a pancake. You know, this, the container size for proofing, whether it's a pan, as in these uh, instances that I'm showing here, or it's some type of a proofing basket, everything has to be calculated based on the amount or weight of the dough that you are putting into that container. So in this little example, you can see that I've, you know, if you've got too little dough and your dough lays out into the bottom of the pan like this, you're expecting a lot from that little piece of dough. And so by the time you proof it, maybe you get it up to around this size. By the time you go and bake it, what do you got? You got a hockey puck in there that's probably flat at the top, maybe even collapsed a little bit. Thus, you have the on the other side. So you've got too big of a piece of dough and you look around your kitchen and you've got this small one pound loaf pan, but you scaled out your dough to a much heavier of a weight. And you've got a couple of options. In this option, it's not so bad because you can pull your dough earlier and bake it off earlier. So the ultimate worst situation that's going to happen there is that you're going to have a really dense product with a real dense crumb and very doughy and, and you know, heavy, heavy kind of a bread. So on the too much side, you can see that after you proof it, you know, by the time you've re that dough weight has reached its optimum proof time for this size of pan, you bake it off and now you've got this ginormous loaf. Ideally, you need to have the right amount of dough so that your product proofs up nice and so at the end of the day when you bake it, uh, it bakes out to a perfect size. Now there's a couple of different ways of actually calculating the total capacity. For a pan, it's quite easy. You can go length times width times height and you get your total capacity. You also can fill that pan with water and weigh it. And it should come out to about the same thing. So let's just say that this pan length times width times height translates into around 1000 grams. Okay, then we know that our optimum dough weight generally as a rule of thumb will be about 40 to 45 percent. I would probably lean coming upwards of uh, for, around 45 percent. And we know also that really, you know, when we start pushing that pan, we're going to get a really dense loaf or a really super tall loaf or something that's going to come over the top of the pan once we start getting much more up over the 55 percent, unless you're making a really dense dense dough and a dense styled bread. Some of these rye breads, things like that, where the grain is supposed to be very compact, very dense, then of course you can go higher. These are guidelines. But for white breads and stuff and standard whole wheats, I would be very, uh, I would kind of stick within the, within the ballpark here. Now you get down into the 30% dough weight based on the capacity. Now you're talking about a really light, fluffy kind of a bread. Uh, you know, it's going to be very airy and, uh, you know, it's not going to be a lot of substance to it. But if that's the characteristics uh, that you're looking for in your bread, for sure, I think about 30% is about minimum that you would want to uh, use um, for in, in, a, in any type of a pan. And in this example here, what I've done is I've just kind of laid out some, you know, some general guidelines. So we can see here that a pan with these dimensions works out to around this capacity. So you can see kind of the minimum scaling weights that I have in here. This is kind of the minimum that I would want to go with with a pan. That, and this is kind of around the maximum that I would use for a small pan like this. 
Now, once again, as I discussed previous, it depends on the type of dough that you want. If you want, if you're making a very dense product, or you're making something with a lot of fillings inside, you want it very compact. Uh, you want, you're expecting the grain to be dense. Then, once again, you know, these are general guidelines. Obviously, when you have smaller weights uh, in a in a pan that's under basically the capacity. You know, that'll still work out fine if you want to create some type of a nice fluffy loaf, very light kind of a bread. So take all this into consideration and just remember that all of this stuff is basically just guidelines. And remember the quick calculation. You know, you take your length, your width, times your height, probably do it in centimeters, and that translates into approximately the total capacity in grams. And then if we use the guidelines from previous, you know, 45% is kind of, 40 to 45% is kind of optimum. Uh, and then you've got your low end and you have your high end also. So with respect to the round containers, a real simple way, now a lot of these are baskets and you can't really put water into them, but you could, you could basically lay in a plastic bag and you could get a pretty close idea what the capacity for your basket sizes um, is. And it's generally the same program. You know, go with your 40 to 45% optimum. Yes, you can go a little higher. Yes, you can go a little lower. But these are general guidelines. And in conclusion, let's just keep in mind and remember that the right amount of dough for the right size pan is very important. Too much and you've got big bread or you have to pull it and uh, bake it off before it's completely uh, proofed out properly. Too little and you're really pushing that dough, you can get away with a small amount of maybe 30% if you want a very nice light airy type of loaf. but. If you go too little and you really try to proof it to make it work inside that pan, you could end up having your dough collapse. The idea is to get right, beautiful, in the middle, with the right amount of dough in the right pan. Now, we know that 45% of the total capacity uh, is about optimum dough weight for uh, pan breads. Uh, nice general guideline to start with. Uh, try to keep that in mind. Uh, it will really make a difference ultimately at the end of the day with the type of finished quality that you have of your bread. Now, if you're using a proof basket, I would recommend going to 55%. And the reason is, is that you really want to have, you don't want to have too big of a basket, uh, especially if you're making the round styled loaves. You want to keep them a little bit more compact. Oftentimes you're using a very high hydration dough in these types of instances. And you want to keep them a little bit more compact, have a little bit more dough inside there so that when you do flip them onto your pan or your baking surface or whatever, then um, you've got it a little bit more um, condensed and uh, not so, hasn't flowed so much. So keep that in mind, 55% is a nice number to use for proofing baskets. And lastly, remember length times width times height in centimeters equals the total capacity in grams. Or you can fill uh, your pan with water or put a plastic bag inside your uh, proof basket to get an idea of the um, total capacity for it. So there you go. That's a uh, pan and proof basket calculations. And uh, that should really make a big difference in the type of product that you produce. Thank you very much for watching the video. I'm going to be releasing a lot of these little, a little short videos. So hit that subscribe button. Keep on top of everything that's coming out. And please drop me a line and let me know what uh, you think of everything in the comment section. So. Anyway, thank you. See you next time on No BS Big.